Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to continue in the book of 2 Corinthians, and we are in chapter 5. For we know that if our, our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, or the physical body of the tabernacle or the tent were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have our earthly body and we have our heavenly body. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. The righteous acts. That's how you get your robe. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. For he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, or the down payment of the Spirit. He paid the price. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. But when the silver cord is parted, absent here, present with the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we labor, and this is labor is, make it our aim that whether present or absent, we may be accepted or please, please be accepted of him or be pleasing to him, well-pleasing. Verse 10 is an unfulfilled prophecy. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in our consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that we may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, and whether we be sober, sober it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We no longer live for ourselves. We live to serve the Lord. We're not after earthly gains. Gains. We're seeking spiritual gifts. That's why we lay our treasures up in heaven. Wherefore, henceforth, know ye no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth know we him no more, 
He was here as a man, and now he's gone. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, or that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, re, re, reconciling, reconciling, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation through his crucifixion we receive forgiveness now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you or we implore you in Christ's stead or on Christ's behalf be ye reconciled to God repent repent for he hath made him, and this verse 21 is a fulfilled prophecy, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Such an enormous gift. We can never go to God in righteousness. We can never be righteous of ourselves. No one must get to heaven. No one could be that perfect. No one could be that sinless. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And as always, I love you.